Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo... Brigadier Wiltshire, a member of the board of directors of the Capital Land and Development Company, had his very impressive saloon parked in the garage beneath the building. He worked only a short time a day, in an advisory capacity only. So Maxie Martin and Jolly Jenkins knew they would have only a little while to wait. Oh, yeah, that's his nibs car, Jolly. I've fixed everything. Won't be long now. In the money, eh? Can't take it with you, though, can you? Oh, remember the war? When we even played garages. That number we used to do for the troops, how did it go? Um, um, oh, I give the one boom, boom, boom. to start oh, all over. Back, back in the old routine. Tell them my night. And here he comes. The brigadier walked smartly to his car, got in. Put the key into the ignition, started the engine. I told you, it'd go like a bomb. Come on, let's make an exit. Oh, we're but very, very sad that you've had to leave us. But when you've got to go, go, you've got to go. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. This is what Mrs. Lyons of Yellowwood Park, Durban, has to say. It is the one powder that does everything. Well, for me, I know that. Yes. There's so many things that I've, I've used and experimented with just to prove cold water, Omo. Really to put it to the ultimate test, you know, and I find that it's well, it's come up to all my expectations. Yes. Cold water, Omo, cleans best. Don't just admire your little girl's complexion. Share it. Knight's Castile is doubly enriched with lanolin to keep your skin soft and young. Pure, mild Knight's Castile for a complexion that never grows up. Episode four of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel continue to chase old-time variety acts, and Bradley Marler, the gag writer, says for the last time. Stop me if you've heard this. John Steed was sure he was right in thinking that the murders of the directors of the Capital Land and Development Company were connected with old-time variety music hall. Mrs. Peel thought so too, but couldn't for the life of her see why. But there was evidence to link the crimes with Mary Maxie Martin and his partner, Jolly Jenkins. But no one, not even Bradley Marler, who used to write material for their act, knew where the two comedians were. It seems that old variety artists never die, they simply fade away. But successful company directors do die. Sir Jeremy Broadfoot, the Honourable Thomas Randolph Cleghorn, and now Brigadier Wiltshire. Lord Dessington, also on the board, was worried. <laughs> Don't blame him. Three. Three of us gone now, Miss Charles. Don't look at me, Lord Dessington. I really am almost as upset as you are. I assure you it had nothing to do with me. But of course it hasn't, you silly woman. And you're safe enough. I don't quite know what you mean. Well, I mean, no one's likely to murder you. I sincerely hope not. I've always tried to do my best for the company. Yes, 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 of course. Well, there's work to do. Come, let's go into my office. Dictation. Yes, Lord Dessington. I'll just get my book. Very well. Follow me. At the door of his office, Lord Dessington paused and called back as he opened the door. Oh, uh, and bring with you the... Lord Dessington staggered back into the boardroom. He gazed in horror at the floor of his office. There was a very large, heavy arc lamp, 
shattered in a hundred pieces. Miss Charles! Miss Charles! Coming, coming! Oh! Oh, what on earth have you done? It isn't what I've done, Miss Charles. It's what someone has tried to do to me. Call John Steed. Tell him someone has just tried to kill me. Call him at once. <laughs> John Steed arrived in double quick time. Hmm. Placed so that it would fall upon the next person to enter. Old fashioned type of joke. The would be killer has an old fashioned mind. It all fits. If I hadn't paused to give extra instructions to Miss Child, then I'd yes, probably. Yes, I see what you mean. But our killer made one mistake. He didn't get you. Lord Dessington. Lord Dessington, I, I've just heard the news. Are you all right? Just all right, Seagrave. Just all right. Well, it's no thanks to you, Steed. Three of us dead. And now another murderous attack. And what, might I ask, have you been doing to help? Chasing eggs? Or is it still red noses? One red nose, actually. Attached to a gentleman known as Mary Maxi Martin. Clown, comic, quick change artist, soft shoe shuffler, star of the Gladchester Palladium, and I suspect killer. There's a killer about, all right. I can't say if... Gladchester Palladium, did you say? Yes, that's right. But this company owns the Gladchester Palladium. Huh? Uh, Miss Charles, uh, fetch the file on the theatre building. I'm afraid it isn't available. We filed it in our archives. Eh? You'll just have to take our word for it, Steed. The Gladchester Palladium is ours. Bought it along with a whole chain of vaudeville theatres. Thirty or forty of them. All due for demolition, of course. Vaudeville dead, as you know. Yes, I can't that's what Mrs. Peel and I have both been saying. And Mrs. Peel advanced the theory that vaudeville might be fighting back. It looks as though she's right, doesn't it? In the main hall of Grease Paint Grange, the home of old variety actors, Mr. Punch, on his small Punch and Judy stage, was once again the centre of attraction. He banged the stand with his cudgel. Failed, failed, failed! Oh, we're sorry, Mr. Punch. Very sorry, Mr. Punch. Sorry? What's the good of being sorry? It was a total failure. Oh, don't worry. We'll do better, second house. Yeah, of course. Second house, we always slay them. Uh, Lord Dessington should now be dead. But he will be. Very soon. You can't win them all, you know. Jolly's right. We'll leave again immediately. It won't happen again. We promise. Come on, Jolly. Ba-bum, ba-bum, bum, 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 bum. Yeah, oh, we're, we're very, very, very sad. Wait, sad. wait. wait. To leave. Eh? I asked the company earlier if there was anyone you could think of who might prove to be a danger to our plan. Well, we told you, no one. No one. Miss Letty from Lancashire says otherwise. Not so, Miss Letty? What about your old gag writer, Maxie? The one who gave you all those blue jokes that closed us down in Scunthorpe. What, you... you mean... That's right, Bradley Marler. He was a lousy writer, in my opinion. Should have stayed off the stout more. But he was devoted to you. He'll know where you are and could give us all away. Bradley Marler. Yeah. Haven't used him for years. Well, you'd better use him now. Once and for all time. Agreed? Bradley Marler, much as he loathed the medium, was working on a new TV series. It was clear from the amount of paper reaching up to his ankles that he wasn't getting along very smoothly. There was no knock at the door. It was merely thrown open. And entrance as usual. I say, I say, I say, would you care to hear what the girl said to the sailor? Absolutely impossible. Ha <laughs> ha, perfectly right, I think, oh. Maxie. Maxie, Martin and Johnny Jenkins. Great, just great. Hi, boys, take a chair. Ha <laughs> ha, hi. Long time no see. Funny you chaps your picture. You know, there's been a fella in here looking for you. Is that so? You hear that, Jolly? Uh, just, just in time. time. We, we found, found you just, just in time. time. Where have you been hiding yourselves? Underneath the arches. Oh, we dare my dreams away. Jolly! Grease paint grange. That's where you've been, of course. And you plan a comeback, so that's why you've come to me. You need fresh material. You, you want to get in and make a killing, that's right. A killing. That's right. A killing. That's right. Hey, uh, do you remember that knife throwing act I worked out for you? It was sensational. Sensational. Uh, you remember, Jolly? You used to stand in front of that ball. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, show me how, Brad. Show me how. Uh, you, you have your hands outstretched uh, like, like this. And you, Maxie, you used to pretend that you were drunk. <laughs> Great. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I used to stagger about the stage like this. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. 
and I had a bit of pattern. I, I used to sing a little number. And, uh, I'm hung over bad this morning. That's why they call me Max the Knife. And then I used to throw the knife, drunkily, but of course very accurately, like this. Oh! The large, vicious-looking knife swished through the air. It was accurate. The handle protruded from the center of Bradley Marlowe's chest. Oh, we're very, very sad that you've had to leave us. But when you've got to go, you've got to go. Now, Mrs. Peel, you know what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Stay close to Lord Desington, act as bodyguard. Yeah, that's right. I think there's no doubt that they'll try again. Right. I'll stay very close. I won't let him out of my sight, not even for a second. Three people have been killed, and, well, I suppose one can't blame people like young Seagrave for wondering why we haven't foreseen what would happen. They could try and get at Lord Desington at any time. Don't worry, Steve. They won't get at him. Not with me around. That's what I like to hear. Confidence. Well, here we are. I only hope that Lord Dessington agrees to your being so, um, intimate. <laughs> we'll see just how intimate he thinks it's going to be. I'm very worried, Mr. Seagrave. Very worried. I think we all are, Miss Giles. You know, Mr. Seagrave, that Lord Dessington is a very busy man. But in point of fact, he doesn't use his office as often as other people. Oh, rubbish. Of course he does. Who else uses it more than he does? One person in particular. Who? Me. Good gracious. Well, you can hardly be serious. Who would want to kill you? That's what Lord Dessington said. He considers me completely unimportant. But I'd like to point out that if these murders are calculated to destroy Project Cupid and undermine the whole of this company, there are two people who know more about the business dealings than any others. One is me because as confidential secretary, nothing can be kept from me. And the other is you, Mr. Seagrave, as company secretary. I think you should be worried too. Don't you? John Steed dropped Emma Peel off at Lord Dessington's and drove home in a thoughtful mood. When he entered his apartment, the phone was ringing. Steed. Bradley Marler, guess what is it? I don't, I don't know what you can make of this, but but it it really killed me when when Mary Maxi called. Maxi Martin called on you. Did you get his address? Yes, uh, written it down uh, on a paper. Uh, the, the knife. 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 Uh, what knife? Well, what are you talking about, Marler? Uh, Marler, answer it, me. It, it's, it's on the. Uh, uh, Marler. What is it, Marla? What, what are you playing at, Marla? No good, Steed. Bradley Marla has cracked his last gag. And with one last lurch, Sam Lacey finishes washing his dog in just 17 minutes, 45 seconds. Well done, Sam. Play any other sports? I lift a pint of beer now and then. You look very fresh, Sam. What deodorant do you use? Shield for sportsmen, of course. Why? It works. Shield for sportsmen deodorant won't stick, sting, or stain. In aerosol or roll-on, it's made to keep sportsmen cool and dry. Think what it can do for you. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user, like Mrs. Bodington. My wash is beautiful, and I'm very proud of it. There's nothing like cold water Omo. No dirt can stand up to Omo. Over a million housewives have proved it. It cleans best. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.